So once you set up your kit, the first thing you'll notice is the quick start guide. In the quick start guide are all the steps for getting started with your product. The first thing the quick start guide walks you through is verifying that your boot settings are properly configured for booting off the SD card. You verify that an SD card is properly installed, the SD card that came with the kit. You plug in the USB console port and then finally plug in power. So with power on the kit, onboard the module is a yellow FPGA Dunlight, and then as soon as the Cortex-A9s load the FPGA fabric with an image, it goes off. So once the system boots, you can log in as root, and we have a quick demo program, demo script in the scripts directory. So you CD to the scripts directory and run LP5562, and this just very quickly runs through a few colors on the RGB LED onboard the module. You plug in your USB key into your PC. You open the folder to view the files on the key. Notice that there's a README PDF there to give you detailed instructions and then also a VirtualBox appliance file. We're going to go to the README. In the README PDF, there's detailed instructions on how to get the virtual machine going. As it talks about, the first thing to do is go to virtualbox.org and download the VirtualBox software from Oracle then install the VirtualBox extension pack. From there, you use this utility and select Import Appliance, and locate the OVA file on your USB key in order to import the OVA file into your VirtualBox image. From here, there's just a couple settings that the README file walks through that you just check and verify. And once that's complete, you hit the Start button in the upper left hand side of the utility to run the virtual box image. Once the virtual appliance has been imported into a virtual box, you click the start icon to start your Ubuntu image. Once the virtual image boots into Ubuntu Linux, you'll see that we have Cordis pre-installed as well as DS5 from ARM pre-installed. Also there's a README. So if you go into the README file, there's a quick overview with information on where to where to locate documentation and support. And information on the contents of the virtual machine itself. When DS5 runs, you can open the license manager and create yourself a 30-day evaluation license. We're going to demonstrate building and loading an application from the command line today. All right. So we're going to open up a terminal window, we'll get to a command prompt, and here we're going to use the make files in order to build just a quick sample application. Sample application reads the FPGA system ID. And here we're going to demonstrate just using the make file that using the DS5 IDE is a, is a much richer user experience for developing code. Here we do the make. Builds the image from scratch and reads this ID images right there, ready to be downloaded and run on the target. When you run the application on the target, it reads the FPGA sys ID and then shows you the build date and time. Now we're going to go into Cordis and build the FPGA image that's needed to support this application. So once you're in Cordis, you open existing project. Then you navigate to the location of the sample project, open it, open QSIS under Tools QSIS. QSIS is also pre-installed on a virtual image. 
Once QSIS is open, the project is open, open the generate window. Click generate to generate your image. Once the generation completes, go back to Cordis. From here, you start the compilation. A pop-up dialog will appear when the compilation is complete. The FPGA image will show up in the project output files directory. And from there, you can download it and run it on the target. Thank you for watching this video on the Mighty Psalm 5 CSX Development Kit from Critical Link. If you have any questions, feel free to contact us at criticallink.com.